Psalm 134. The Bible says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Our hearts were stirred and blessed. God, we thank you for the good testimonies. And God, several testified about your protective hand. God, you was watching out over your children. God, we're thankful for that. Oh, Lord, uh, we're thankful for your guiding hand. We're thankful for your tender hand. Lord, we're thankful for the great saving hand of God. Now, Father, help us from the Word of God now. Oh, Lord, open our eyes and our minds to truth. And God, uh, I pray your will be done with these prayer requests. And God, you'd certainly bless those working with the children and the teens. And Father, help us, Lord, uh, to be seated in heavenly places. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Use this unworthy vessel, and we'll thank you for that as well. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to under, uh, see some things here from this chapter. Realize what the psalmist is saying. And really, there are 15 psalms. Uh, beginning back in Psalm 120, uh, 15 psalms that are psalms of degrees. And these psalms of degrees are sung by the high priest every step that they would take going up into the temple, getting ready to worship. And each one dealt with different stages in Israel's history and how God moved and how God blessed uh, David wrote most of them, but Solomon wrote some, and some were attributed to others. Uh, and can I say, they dealt with how God uh, became their helper, and how they could look to the hills from whence cometh their help, and, and how God reached down from heaven, how God heard and answered prayer. And, and all these psalms of degree was to remind them about when they were in low places, uh, and yet God did not forget their low estate, uh, and how he would show up and help them. Uh, by the time we get to Psalm 134, I want you to notice he says, Behold, in other words, stop and look around for a minute. Uh, and he says, Behold, and when you see all that God has done, uh, notice the plea to bless the Lord. Uh, he said, Behold, bless ye the Lord. Uh, who's to bless the Lord? Ye. Bless ye the Lord. There is a plea. Uh, David is saying, I'm blessing the Lord, uh, but you need to bless the Lord. Uh, the Lord's been good to us. Uh, he has watched over us. He has helped us. Uh, he has been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, he has fulfilled his promises. Uh, he is the great God of glory. Uh, so there is a plea to bless the Lord. Uh, uh, we see the participants uh, who is to bless the Lord. Uh, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord. Uh, if you know the Lord, uh, you're without excuse not to bless the Lord. Uh, you ought to bless Him with your voice. Uh, you ought to bless Him with your steps. Uh, you ought to bless Him on the job. Uh, you ought to bless Him at the supermarket. Uh, you ought to bless Him wherever you find yourself. Uh, because without God, your life would be in a mess. Uh, we see the plea to bless the Lord, the participants to bless the Lord. Uh, but notice uh, the best place to bless the Lord. Uh, Verse number 2, uh, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. You know why the house of God's a great place to bless the Lord? Because you're amongst your kind. You get out in aisle three of Kroger's uh, and you start saying, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, all oh, that is within me, bless the Lord. They're going to call Caitlin to come escort you out. They're going to say, Nut, aisle three. They don't understand blessing the Lord down there at Kroger's. Or they'll certainly avoid that aisle till you exit it. But when you're in the house of God, and you want to, you just stand up and say, I want to praise the Lord. He's been good to me. Uh, hey, this crowd understands what you're talking about. Uh, this crowd knows because uh, he's blessed them too. Uh, and it might be your voice blessing the Lord that God uses to bless them. A lot of times, uh, you're sitting underneath a juniper tree. you got the pooch mouth, and somebody gets to blessing the Lord. 
and somebody else gets the blessing of the Lord. By the way, the Bible does say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And all of a sudden, you, you start getting out of the molly grubs and you get to thinking about how God's been to you uh, and you just might get out from underneath that juniper tree and bless the Lord yourself. Uh, the house of God's a great place to bless the Lord. But notice the purpose for blessing the Lord. Look at verse number 3. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. Zion is Jerusalem. He's saying, we ought to bless the Lord because the Lord's blessed us. That's the whole purpose for blessing Him because He's been good to us. He's allowed us to breathe His air, His footstool, enjoy His creation. Hey, He has blessed us and met every need, uh, uh, every need supplied. He was the third man on that middle cross uh, and He died for your sin and my sin. Uh, hey, He sent some old man or somebody by your way to tell you about uh, going to heaven. Uh, I mean, and He's let us walk with Him along the way. Uh, I mean, He's been good to us. He's blessed us. Uh, we are faring much better than serve tonight uh, and hey, we ought to bless the Lord uh, but I'm not going to preach on any of that I want to preach on why some cannot bless the Lord I don't know about you I don't know about anywhere else I just know how good God's been to us around here I mean he's been good to us and I sit back and I scratch my head and I wonder about some folks you never see bless the Lord. Now again, I don't know about anybody anywhere else. And I'm glad to know that you used to walk on fire. We're going to get some mileage out of that. Uh, uh, uh. Ace Ventura right here. You, you got it? Yeah, spear of the thigh. Yep, we got it. You ain't never living that and down, Michael Jackson. Huh? But I don't know about anywhere else. But I know God's been good to us around here. And, and, and I just don't understand, Miss Marcy, how people can sit for years and you never see them broken, you never see them in an altar, you never see them lift a hand, you never see a tear run down their eye, you never see a smile on their face, you never see them do anything but sit there not, like a knot on a log. Why can't they bless the Lord? Now listen, we can read 1 Corinthians 14. It is not in the order of God that every one of us bless the Lord every time we come to church. Not everybody can, that's a preacher can preach. Not everybody that's a singer can sing. Not everybody can testify because we'll get into a confused mess and we'll also be here for a long time. Everything's to be done in decent and order and it's not God's will for every service for somebody to testify. But when it's in order, somewhere along the line, Something's going to have to break out on some folks. But there's some you never, ever, ever, ever see them bless the Lord. And that boggles me. Hmm? It does. It boggles me. Now, I understand there are some people that are not as outgoing as others. There are some that are shy. Take it back. There is nobody more meek and shy in the world than this fellow right here. Nobody. This guy sneaks up on his own shadow. He's so, so shy. But he just got up and sang and blessed the Lord. Huh? He sure did. Huh? I mean, he'll go out and knock on doors and pass out tracks and be scared to death that somebody's going to open the door, but he'll do it. So you can't use that, well, it's my nature. Well, that's your whole problem because if you get saved, you get a new nature. And that new nature every now and then is going to show out on you. He just will. But why are there some that just cannot bless the Lord? I got to thinking about that. Can I say, first of all, some cannot bless the Lord because they have not experienced salvation. You can't bless the one you don't know anything about. Hmm? Uh, Brother Phil and I was talking before service and I told you this may come out Brother Phil I still didn't know which way I was going but he says he'll, he'll text some of his relatives and, and say something about, the, about heaven about the Lord or say something about the Lord he said they know about heaven but they don't know about the Lord hmm? isn't it amazing how some people talk about God they'll talk about dying and seeing a light they'll talk, they don't talk about Jesus Christ because they don't know him see you've got to know him to bless him Huh? 
Listen, I, I used the other day when I was talking about that, that, that restaurant. When I've been to a restaurant, I can tell you about the restaurant. But you start talking about some place, and I mean, i got a bunch of them. You want to talk about Jeff Ruby's? We'll talk about that. You want to talk about the boathouse? We'll talk about that. I can tell you all about what I get there when I go because I always order the same thing because you can't improve upon excellence. You know what I'm saying? But you start talking about ping-pang Chinese twang-twang, I don't know nothing. Don't know, don't want to know, don't tell me, not interested. Not happening. Hmm? Anybody been to the mall? Not only do they not have any stores anymore, go to the food court. I mean, it's, it's Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, and ping pang, whatever that is. I don't know. So you better eat at Smoky Bones before you get in there, is what I'm saying. Huh? Why? Because I don't know anything about that. People say, you know, Thad says, I don't like Chinese either, but if you go to P.F. Chang's, you'll love it. You'll go. I told, I've told you a hundred times, I'll go with you to P.F. Chang's. I just stop and get a cheeseburger on the way in. I'm not eating dog. I'm not doing it. Huh? But listen, you can't talk about something you don't know about. You say, preacher, if you ever tried it, you'd like it. Well, I'll never know about it. I'll, I'll never know if I like it. Huh? I'm not Mikey. He likes it. No, it ain't happening. That's a life commercial, life cereal. You've got to go back way. Google it. Google it, Donald. You're too young. Huh? But there are some people that cannot bless the Lord because they've never experienced salvation. How can you talk about the one that's altogether lovely if you've never met him? Huh? How can you talk about the one whose voice is as many waters if you've never heard it? Uh, how can you talk about the hand that hallowed out the waters uh, if you've never been held by it? Uh, how can you talk about the deliverance if you're still in your sin, my dear friends? Uh, some cannot bless the Lord because they've never experienced salvation. I thought about this. Some cannot bless the Lord because they've never been enlightened by the Scriptures. They've never been taught how to bless the Lord. They've never been taught... Uh, the Word of God and what the importance is about letting folks know what Jesus has done for you. There's a lot of people that have been saved, but they've never been taught. They've never been discipled. And that's why there's so many people that are confused today. Can I say? People are scared of this term, doctrine. You know what doctrine is? It's the study of the Bible. And it's important. It's important to know what you believe. There are a lot of Baptist churches taking Baptists off the church because they say, well, we can get more people. Well, you're going to get more confusion. And starting in Numbers, uh, 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 the Lord told the tribes of Israel to hold out an inside, let them know what tribe they were of, what stripe they were of. Uh, 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 I'm not ashamed about being a Baptist. Uh, I'm not ashamed about what we believe because uh, we believe the Bible. And not all Baptists believe the Bible, but we try to believe it as closely as it was written around here. But some have never been taught doctrine. They've never been taught the importance of praising the Lord and worshiping God. They've never been taught. By the way, I can't tell you how to worship. You've got to experience that. But I can lead you to a place to where you can through the Scriptures. And it's so important. Some just cannot bless the Lord because they've never been enlightened by the Scriptures. Mm -mm. Don't look at me funny. You didn't know truth till it was taught to you either. Mm -mm. Say this. Uh, some cannot bless the Lord because they've embraced sin in your life. You can't bless the Lord when you're filled with wickedness. You can't sing hallelujah to the Lord while you've been dancing with the devil. Mm -mm. It just do not happen. Matter of fact, God don't even hear your prayers when you've got sin and iniquity in your life. If I regard iniquity in my life, the Lord won't hear my prayers. You bless the Lord when you've embraced sin in your life. There's a lot of folks all week long, they're looking like the world, acting like the world, walking like the world, running with the world, and they show up on Sunday, they can't bless the Lord. Can't do it. You can't have a foul mouth outside the walls and have a mouth of praise inside the walls. Doesn't happen. Mm -mm. I've said it for years, if you can't say it in here, you don't need to say it out there. Mm -hmm. Some just can't bless the Lord. They've embraced sin in their life, huh? I've seen people live wicked, 
do everything, shack up, do everything, then come to the house of God, and you never see anything of them. Why? They got sin in their life. Hmm. Well, that went over real well. Uh, it's true, whether you like it or not. Some can't bless the Lord because they're empty of the Spirit. I used this in my Sunday school class this morning. Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, I'll just say it like I said it in my Sunday school class. It was in my class. That's what you get for being in my class. You didn't get it, so you're going to get it again. Where he's using the term wine, he is not using what we think of as wine. He's using the fruit of the vine. Jesus never drank wine. He never drank anything intoxicating. Why would he have Solomon write that uh, strong drink is, is wine is a mockery and strong drink is raging if he was going to partake of it? That'd make Jesus a hypocrite. He wasn't a hypocrite. You need to understand the laws of fermentation. The wine that drink, Jesus drank is what we would call the fruit of the vine or grape juice. Matter of fact, when he changed the water into wine, and the governor of the feast said, why would you save the best for last? What was he saying? He said, you brought out the, uh, the stuff that's not intoxicating. This is the good stuff. This is sweet stuff. This is the fruit of the vine. That's what Jesus created. He didn't create the poison that causes homes to be split up and people become drunkards and get roasted as a liver. Jesus didn't do that. But what Paul was teaching, be not drunk or be filled with wine, where it's excess, he's saying, don't let anything fill you in excess, void you of the Spirit of God. Whether it be wine, whether it be TV, whether it be anything in this world, don't let it consume you to where God can't. But notice what he said. He didn't say, be ye filled with He said, be filled with the Spirit. I said it this morning. The moment you got saved, you got all of the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get. The rest of your life, you're going to uh, uh, get in that Bible and live and work out your own salvation, as Paul said it, to where you are filled with the Spirit of God, where you're empty of things that aren't of God and filled with the things of God. Uh, that comes through prayer. That comes through spending time in the Word of God. That comes through meditating on God. That comes from having a song of God in your heart to stir you. That comes with just being filled with the goodness and things of God uh, and letting the fruits of the Spirit of God uh, overtake you uh, uh, to where you come in the house of God uh, and you got a good case of the can't help it uh, and you can't help but to throw up your hands and say, Bless the Lord! Uh, he's been good to me! Uh, some can't because they're empty of the Spirit. Because they're full of everything in this world. Can I say, you can be full of things of the world that aren't wicked. You know, you can read the TV guide, that's not wicked. Do they even make them anymore? Uh, you can be filled with, uh, you know, Cyber Monday sales. That's not wicked. But if that's all that's on your mind, you're not going to bless the Lord. And what a sad commentary that I'm sure in churches all across America today there were people talking more about the bargains they got this week than about the blessings of God. Mm -mm. Some can't bless the Lord because they're empty of the Spirit. I thought about this. Some cannot bless the Lord because they have empathy for worldly sinners. I didn't say sympathy. I feel sorry for every sinner. They're on their way to hell. A lot of them are religious, but they're lost. But I said empathy. Empathy is where you identify with them. Where you start embracing their ideologies. I'll give this example. It's a true story long time ago kind of in your boat I was teaching young people a little bit older than the ones you got and was just giving this class I was new to this church I had just become an associate pastor really didn't know many people in there Brother Lawrence was in my class so you know I had a handful <laughs> uh, 
So I began teaching these young people. And lo and behold, we got on the topic of homosexuality. Never comes up. All the time. Especially nowadays. Well, there was a young lady in there that got greatly offended. Because I just taught the Bible. I mean, I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I didn't know I was supposed to stroke people's feelings. I still haven't learned that. And this young lady was very upset. And if I called her name, you'd know her. This lady was very upset because she went to school with a young man who was a seven-day Adventist. Well, first of all, let's stop right there. That's a cult. That's not a church. Seven-day Adventists are not saved people. They're part of a cult. They're going to split hell wide open. He was raised in a very strict seven-day Adventist house, and he ended up being a homosexual, so God had to make him that way because he was raised very strict. So she got real offended at me and never came back to my class because I was wrong. The Bible's wrong because God made that man that way. No. i tell you what happened to that man. Somebody introduced him to it. They seduced him to it. They made him feel like he was that way. And I guarantee you, his parents probably didn't build any self-esteem in him probably didn't show him much love and can I say somebody was willing to show him love and introduced him to that lifestyle and then told him he was normal in that lifestyle and he became hook, line, sinker, privy to it and it's probably a reprobate today if he's alive now let me just say right there God can save a homosexual and if God saves a homosexual it won't be a homosexual anymore but there comes a point when they're given over to it so far, they become reprobate, which means tested out worthless, and God gives them over to those things which are not convenient, and God will never deal with them about their sin again. Most of the time, I believe, Brother John, reprobates are those crowds that they're involved in pursuing, especially children, trying to introduce them into this lifestyle. Mm -mm. nobody wakes up one day and says hmm I think I want to swing for the other team nope just like Eve was beguiled by Satan Satan always sends somebody to beguile them introduce them to it usually start out lavishing them with gifts and making them feel important and everything and then boom get them caught into it before they understand what's going on and then they feel so ashamed, they don't, they don't think that they can face it. Many of them commit suicide. Sad. But what I'm trying to say is, that young lady had empathy for her friend more than truth. And can I say, i never seen that lady ever become faithful to God. i never seen her ever bless the Lord. And most likely, she didn't know the Lord herself. Hmm. But you're not going to bless the Lord embracing the sin of sinners empathizing with wicked sinners can I say the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day can I say God loves sinners but he hates sin and God never sweeps sin under the carpet and God never justifies sin and God is never pleased with sin uh, and therefore God's people are to be holy for God is holy uh, and we're not to embrace sin uh, we're not to be pleased with sin uh, we're not to accept sin uh, uh, yes accept the sinner yes plead with the sinner uh, yes try to persuade the sinner uh, but never become sinful dealing with sinners to where it affects your walk with God God. We're to come ye out and be separate, saith the Lord. Mm. But when you have empathy for worldly sinners, you'll never, ever bless the Lord. James 4 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I'd rather be a friend with Jesus, wouldn't you? Mm. I thought about this lastly. You know why some cannot bless the Lord? 
they haven't entered the sanctuary. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? His day. Him coming. You're not going to bless the Lord on the lake or on the golf course. You don't come to the house of God, you're not going to bless the Lord. If you're not faithful to God, you're not going to bless the Lord. Now listen, there are some people providentially hindered. I promise you if Miss May could be here tonight, she'd bless the Lord. She can't be here. She physically cannot be here. God understands that. I'm not talking about people providentially hindered. I'm talking about people that are too sorry, no good to come to the house of God. They let other things become more important to them than God, and therefore they'll not bless the Lord. We ought to live our life striving to be pleasing to God and to be a blessing to God. And that's really what blessing the Lord is all about, being a blessing to God because He has so blessed us. Let me ask you a question. Does your life bless the Lord? I don't know about you. Let me give you about me. I often wonder and think, is God pleased with the investment He placed in my life? See, He invested His Son, and He paid for it all through the blood of Calvary for my life. Is He, ble is he pleased with the return on His investment? Listen, I don't know about you, but them 401Ks have kind of took a hit this year. Some of the investments didn't pan out. I wonder if God's pleased with His investment in us. See, that's what blessing the Lord is all about. Is He pleased? Yes. Now listen. All three of my children are here. Jordan's back there with the kids. I've never been sorry for anything I invested in my children. My children have brought me joy. They brought me pride. I'm thrilled that they're serving God. And nothing, I know you feel that way about Ben and Maddie and your kids. I mean, what price do you put on what you invested in Ben for him to become out the young man that he's, he's become? We don't feel sorry for that. Huh? I want God to feel the same way when he looks at me as his child. I don't want him to be disappointed. I want him to be pleased. I will tell you this. I used to kind of not tell Miss Annette the whole story. Christian walked onto a football field like no other t teammate he ever played with. He always had the best of everything. Till one day she found the receipt of what I paid for a helmet. You spent $500 on a helmet? So it's only his head, you know. <laughs> I don't care how much the helmet cost. And it really wasn't about his head. It was about how good he looked in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she had a ball glove. She spent one season with it. Spent $500 on that ball glove. I guarantee you when she's got kids, they'll be able to use that ball glove. You know why? Because my dad spent 70 on one when I was five, and everybody thought he was crazy because he could go to Twin Fair and get one for five bucks. And can I say, I can still pull that thing out 53 years later, and it'll still catch everything you throw at me. But you know what? I'm not sorry that I spent that or the hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars on bats. Or the, thank God she went to college and they paid for everything. You know, blessing. But more important than that, nothing we've ever provided for them. So I look back and I said, boy, I'm sorry I did that. Because they're a blessing to me. Well, that ought to be our ideology. God has invested all of that in our lives. He's given His Son. He's given us this great church. He's given us this church family. He's given us uh, everything that we have. Is He blessed with us or is He disappointed in us? When it says, bless ye the Lord, get the mentality of, am I a blessing to God? We ought to be. And we can be. By just putting Him first and striving to please Him. I know right now, if I ask my children for anything, they'll, they'll jump to do it. 
that's the way we ought to be with God. If he asks anything of us, we ought to jump to be... We shouldn't have to get right with him to be able to do it. We ought to just jump to do it. Yes, Lord, whatever you want. So let me ask you a question. Have you blessed the Lord this week? Have you been a blessing to him? Hmm. I can personally say many of you have been a blessing in my life. And I know you've blessed the Lord. But that ought to be our goal every day, is to be a blessing to God. Because every day he loads us with benefits. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank him. Maybe you need to come tonight and tell him you love him. Maybe tonight you just need to go to somebody. It's been a blessing to you and say, you know, I, I just want you to know you've been a blessing to me. I don't know. You just find the Lord tonight. Maybe he spoke to your heart and showed you an area of your, of your life that he's not pleased with. Why don't you come do business with him so he'll be pleased with you. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we do want to be a blessing to you. You've been so good to us. You've been good to our church. and God, you've been so faithful and so wonderful. And God, help us to be pleasing unto you. Help us, Lord, to always shine for you. And Lord, even when we disappoint you, help us to get it made right quickly so we can go on blessing you. And God, we all know folks that aren't blessing you. And God... I pray for them. I pray that they'd get things made right so they could be a blessing to you. But Father, now, blessing in this invitation, speak to hearts. Maybe somebody's really low tonight, and you need to send somebody by their way. Tell them they've been a blessing. Lord, just bless in this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.